Thanks for coming, everybody. My name's David Everett. I used to work here for a minute. And uh, it is super exciting to have you all here and to get this thing going. I'm going to be your uh, MC, as it were. And uh, it, we're going to keep it pretty informal, but we've got a few things to do. It is so great to see all the familiar faces and, uh, and reconnect with people. It is, uh, it's like a family reunion here, actually. It's really, really cool. So thank you all for coming out. We're going uh, to jump right in. We have a few more seats in the front-ish area if you want to jump in there. And can everybody hear me OK? For those of you who um, uh, don't remember or, uh, or, or weren't here, uh, Mayor Becker served from 2008 until 2000, January of 2016. And two uh, full, uh, very successful terms. And we'll be talking a little bit about uh, some of the accomplishments during those terms here as we move forward. Um, but before we do, the reason we're here is because, uh, as is tradition in Salt Lake City, uh, once a mayor has completed his or her term, uh, a portrait is commissioned and the mayor sits for that portrait in a old school live sense of the concept and uh, that portrait is uh, created. And I'm told that uh, Mayor Becker here uh, sat for uh, many, many hours, maybe 20, 20 plus hours, which uh, if you know anything about Ralph, that's, that's not much time at all. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure it, it, uh, the time passed very quickly. And we're, I'm very excited to see what, uh, what, what is underneath the curtain here. And we will, of course, uh, uh, Finish with that. Last time I saw it, he had bear's hands, so I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's still going to be the case. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, but first thing I want to do is introduce the artist. Uh, Jeff Hine is uh, a portrait artist, obviously, and his work uh, is it's renowned. He is from New York, and uh, he studied at Ricks College, and uh, he has been out here in Salt Lake City and at the University of Utah for many years. Um, he, his work has been shown in numerous galleries uh, and museums, and he's been featured in a variety of publications, including the American Art Collector, uh, the Fine Art Connoisseur, uh, and Arts and Antiques, and even Jet Set Magazine. So uh, without too much more ado, I just want to introduce Jeff and have him say a few words, and we'll, uh, we'll hear from him now. Well, this is strange, and it's an honor to be here. <laughs> um, I, I know you're not here to um, listen to me, so I'm going to make this brief. But I just wanted to say a few words about my experience with Ralph. So w when, um, when we met, it was um, due to Ralph's search for an artist. And uh, I haven't done a lot of political portraits. He's actually my second. I, I focus mostly on family portraits. And uh, I honestly didn't think I would get the job. Um, I told him that he would have to sit for it. And I figured that was a deal breaker. And because uh, most of these are done from photos. But um, that's significant because I had the honor and pleasure of spending a lot of time with Ralph. I think it's probably more than 20 hours. And, uh, and it lasted a year because he's constantly traveling and I'm traveling and doing other projects. So it took us a year to finish this portrait together. And uh, I had the honor of really getting to know him. And um, I, I would say that from the short time that we did spend together, um, we had some conversations that led me to believe that he's truly a man of integrity. And I'm grateful to know him. And uh, grateful that we had him as our, uh, as our mayor. One thing that really stood out to me was um, when I called Kate, originally I called a bunch of people that he had recommended, just people who are close to him. That's how I do portraits. I, I connect with people that are close to the sitter and ask them about the, the, the sitter because I want an unbiased opinion. I know the sitter will be too humble. And so Kate had said to me, I believe it was you, that said that he was known as the biking mayor, and I had forgotten about that. And so we made that a significant part of the portrait. But... What I learned about him that I already knew, but I learned to what degree, um, and that is just how serious he is about um, the environment and about um, Salt Lake City being a clean and healthy place to live. And I never saw his car. Over a period of a year, 
he never drove a car. And I remember one time I asked him to bring two suits because we were going to uh, just sort of try different things for him to wear. And he shows up with this big old hiking backpack <laughs> and a mountain bike in a blizzard in the middle of the winter, knocking on my studio door with his suits in the backpack. <laughs> and I thought, I mean, who does that? <laughs> but someone who truly cares about the environment. I mean, he is the real deal. And I know there's a lot of people that tout caring about the environment and then they ride their jet planes everywhere, their private planes, and he is not that guy. He is the real deal. And, um, it's, it, and, and I really got to experience that. And also just, a, he seems like a kind, tender-hearted man and, and uh, he was really kind to my kids who are always around and for that I'm grateful. So it was a, a true honor to work with you, Ralph and to get to know you better, and I was grateful for that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Those were kind words, and I uh, appreciate in particular your, your uh, observations about, uh, about Mayor Becker and his, um, his sort of living what, living what he speaks. You know, it's truly, um, it, it is very much true, and it, remi it reminds me that um, you know Ralph certainly was known as kind of the green mayor and ran on a, a big sustainability platform. But the thing that always uh, struck me was how he interacted with the people around him, and that just fundamental level of uh, kindness and respect for people. Um, I think, in some ways, we we who, who worked in the mayor's office, we. Uh, and on the campaigns, we took it for granted a little bit, actually. Um, and it's been, um, it's a good reminder of, of, what, uh, uh, of what those years were like and, and, and how enjoyable they were for those of us who got to work with Mayor Becker directly, both in campaign world and uh, here at the city many of those many years. Um, so with that, Mayor Becker, I think we'll bring up the, um, the man himself for a few words and uh, see what happens. Thank you. Well, a, a few words. It's only about an hour and a half, so settle in, uh, enjoy yourselves this evening. Um, I thank you, Jeff, uh, for your artistry, of course, and for putting up with having to look at me all those hours. Um, and for Dave, um, what a partnership really from, from the time uh, really I decided to run. Uh, Dave was there all the way through the last, uh, the last days of, of serving. And to Kate and Sarah, who put together a, a little uh, accomplishments piece that, um, that you can get on your way out, right? It's in the back here, I think, somewhere. So please, uh, please pick that up. That's a summary that's really nicely done. That's a summary of the, of the, years, um, of the years in office. And really, I can't help but think as I, you know, start talking that uh, that any time someone like me gets a, a position like I did, that it really takes um, an incredible team, and that was the staff um, and the and the departments and the the 3,000 employees in Salt Lake City, uh, and and a lot of you I got to work with closely are here today. So I I thank you for uh, for that opportunity uh, to work with you. So when I decided to run for mayor, um, I, um, I kind of developed a theme, as is not uncommon in a campaign, but that my goal was to help create a great American city. And to me, I think, um, if I were going to summarize that in a few words, it's, it would be to create the most livable city um, in, in the United States. And to my surprise, though, it got a little bit diverted along the way in the sense that the year I came into office was the year of the Great Recession. And for the next six years, Dave and Gina and others um, were working in the city to try to figure out how to balance a budget with decreasing revenues every single year. And at the same time, to pursue a very aggressive agenda um, that um, 
I, with our group, had developed over the campaign year uh, in a format that became known as Blueprints. Um, I was Blueprint Man. And, um, and we were determined, regardless of the fiscal conditions we faced, to pursue those, uh, those, uh, that agenda. And it revolved around uh, this livability concept, which included maybe in terms of our, our human experience, uh, providing justice and opportunity for all. So during that time, uh, we established uh, early on uh, a mutual commitment registry. These are all first in the state. A non-discrimination ordinance, which five years later was adopted statewide a capital city education program, uh, and the first education coordinator um, for the city um, in the mayor's office. And then the theme, though, really was, as I said, around livability, which in my mind equates to sustainability, um, and which is how do we provide for ourselves best as a city, both today and then looking long-term towards tomorrow. And the underlying theme, I think, through all of that time um, was about how do we address climate change? And the two go really hand in hand because if you're working, as Mayor Behrman would attest to, um, in Park City, if you're working to create a place where it's a great place to live and a healthy place to live, you're also creating um, a sustainable city and a city that's addressing um, what we need to do as it relates to climate change. So that included um, looking at energy efficiency and renewables. Um, we, during this time, uh, overhauled the city's fleet and the buildings, which included the first net zero public safety building in the country. Um, it included um, devoting ourselves to air quality issues. Um, and among those things was establishing at the Clear the Air Challenge with Governor Huntsman, which is now statewide and pursued pursued uh, today. It included the first solar farm. It included incentives for commercial buildings to meet LEED standards. It included um, quietly pursuing uh, open space and watershed land acquisitions, again, with leadership across the city. And also, for, particularly for a city like Salt Lake, it meant providing for access to the outdoors. And our primary uh, features, I'd say, are the Jordan River and the Wasatch Mountains. And among the items were Mountain Accord, uh, the Regional Athletic Complex, the Leonardo Museum, the Fisher Mansion, the Parley's Historic Nature Park Plan, otherwise known as the Dog Park, which everyone <laughs> so enjoyed. <laughs> um, it meant looking at urban agriculture. And of course, this community was established uh, as an urban self-sustaining place. So going back and supporting community gardens and allowing for chickens and bees and front yard agriculture. Um, and then in any city, um, having a vibrant downtown is, is essential. And the two, of course, most noteworthy elements of that were the Eccles Theater and the Regent Street rede uh, redevelopment, but that was among many others things that we, we encouraged uh, and supported downtown. Um, and then from the beginning, we were really troubled by homelessness. And during the time I was mayor, the nature of that changed dramatically because we were focused initially on completing uh, a housing for all uh, and, the, and the chronically homeless. And Salt Lake City became the first city with Phoenix. Uh, we kind of tied by our count. Uh, to end homelessness among veterans with a lot of support at all uh, levels of government. Um, and then as the conditions changed with homeless populations, we realized we were losing ground on that effort. And we were fortunate to have Gail Miller um, and former Mayor Palmer DePaulis step forward and with the county and, and others, all of the various uh, interests uh, come together and come up with a plan to, uh, to address homelessness under today's world, which is still being, uh, uh, being carried out. And with the great, actually, success we were having as a city, uh, one of the things that I came to realize was that uh, rather than just 
sort of surviving as a city, which we were kind of wondering about um, in the early year or two, um, that we were thriving to a point that a lot of people couldn't afford housing. So we decided uh, to take on affordable housing um, over a couple of years um, with both a lot of both kind of research and work with private partners and others, um, we developed a, an affordable housing program called 5,000 Doors to achieve 5,000 affordable doors uh, in Salt Lake City in five years. And we were actually ahead of that goal um, at, the time we left, uh, at the time we left office. And for any city to be successful, um, it needs to include mobility and how we get around. And we have been a devoted culture like the rest of the United States and much of the, much of the developed world, where it's really been auto-oriented for the last uh, 50 years. And it was like, how do we change that dynamic and give people really other options for how to get around and provide for a healthier environment? So in the course of, um, of the uh, eight years I was in office, um, again, with incredible partners, um, uh, we developed the airport tracks line, um, which was sort of touch and go for a while, as Mike Allegra will attest to. Um, we developed decades ahead of schedule a streetcar line in Salt Lake City with the Sugar House streetcar line. Um, we developed those pesky bike lanes all over the city. Um, um, and we launched uh, really largely with the incredible leadership from Maureen Riley, who's come here from Orlando to join us. Uh, the reconstruction of the airport, which had been decades um, in the making and was finally, uh, was finally started, and we're a little over a year away from completing that. Uh, we started a bike share program, uh, which was a foreign concept in this area, um, and we developed a Hive Pass, as it was called, program to provide every resident of Salt Lake City a reduced fare pass um, for transit. Uh, we also developed uh, Rick Graham will smile at this. Uh, these wonderful parking stations that were uh, just beloved from the day of introduction. Uh, but of course, we've worked through all that, and I don't hear complaints about that uh, anymore, I'm glad to say. Um, and finally, I think when it comes to, uh, to a city, um, there's an opportunity to try to uh, improve on uh, good government and good governance. And uh, that's something that from the time I started to run for mayor, uh, people said was um, a notion that was too either esoteric or abstract for people to really relate to. But I think we found that there was incredible opportunities to improve the way people engaged with and help form decisions uh, in government. Um, I was able to be part of two civility, and, and in one case, compassion and civility, um, statewide efforts with two different lieutenant governors. Um, we developed for the city a public engagement guide because what we found was while we could do things in the mayor's office, that oftentimes how that was understood and reflected in all of the decisions throughout the departments and divisions of city government were harder to accomplish. Uh, so led by a whole group of people through city government, we developed that public engagement guide. Um, to be used um, for decision making. Uh, we developed an online uh, city hall and uh, an interactive feature which engaged a lot more people um, online. Um, we developed a, a, a one-stop uh, permitting process which reduced permitting times in half. Um, and then we started with something that sort of just morphed into almost everyday effort called Salt Lake Solutions, which was as we came across topics and issues was to vest in the stakeholders in those topics, the actual decision making for us as a city, and then our job with others would be to carry that out. So that was, those were all things that we focused a lot of attention on, um, and we felt um, Dave, with his whip, was able to help us you know, get a lot of those things, uh, a lot of those things done. Since I've left office and, and, and during some of my, I'd say, later years in office, um, I really had a chance also to reflect on, um, on kind of the broader issues of cities and, and city uh, government. Um, I was part of the advisory board for the U.S. Conference of Mayors and became president of the National League of Cities, which are the two elected official organizations nationally. 
And while those official positions were, were kind of fun and interesting, what really benefited me and hopefully this city was the exposure I got to what was going on all across the country and really to a certain extent around the world. And to identify best practices and best approaches and best projects and see some on the ground and interact with other, particularly local elected officials of what was working and not working um, and try to, try to benefit uh, from that. Um, and also to meet amazing local government officials, um, elected officials, not just in our state, but, but really across the country and, and the world, because in this divisive era that we're in, there is much less of that at the local government, just kind of out of necessity, right? If the streets aren't getting cleaned and the street lights aren't working, unless you're in a place like Dhaka, Bangladesh, it doesn't, you know, people aren't very happy. Um, so um, it also, though, gave me an opportunity with climate change uh, and through relationships and work with the Obama administration to serve on President Obama's climate change task force and to, um, to really help shape a national agenda around cities and the city's role and, and how the national government can support cities really taking a lead, recognizing that is where so much happens uh, today in our, in our country. Uh, and that culminated for me in my last month in office, really, when, uh, when I went to Paris as a part of the U.S. delegation for the, the Paris Climate Accords, um, which kind of centered around cities uh, for the first time uh, in, the, in, the climate, in, in the international climate talks. So seeing what was on the ground, seeing what worked in other places, bringing those things back, to me was a big part of being mayor because of everything that I could learn and then bring back and drive everybody in city government crazy with new ideas. Um, but also just help shape what we could and couldn't, couldn't do as a city. Um, since I left um, the mayor's office, I also had an incredible opportunity through a leadership and government fellowship uh, through the Open Society Foundation um, and the topic that I uh, selected that was supported was looking at what is it that allows a mayor as an elected official to be successful in governing? And what, what are the distinguishing characteristics there? Um, because the focus is on campaigning, uh, which sort of goes on nonstop. But of course where things get done is when someone is in, um, is in office. Uh, and that included um, looking at three very different cities with three very different but incredibly effective mayors in Louisville, in Austin, um, and in uh, Gary, Indiana. And out of that, um, really there were, I'd say, five sort of points that sort of became really clear for successful uh, mayors. Uh, one is to have a clear vision that people can understand and relate to and obviously um, support. Um, one is hiring the best possible staff and support for getting things uh, done. Uh, another is convening all of the stakeholders around any given uh, topic or, or issue you want to work on. And then having those stakeholders uh, build a consensus. Because if there's one thing that easily stops um, anything from getting done, it's when there's a divided community and powerful interests fight each other rather than support getting things, uh, getting things accomplished. And finally, implementation. And that's the getting things done part, uh, but it needs to be considered really from the beginning if it's going to be successful. So going forward, uh, here we are in this great uh, city of ours. Um, and I really believe that Salt Lake City has an, an incredibly bright future. Uh, we have remarkable assets that few, if any, other cities have, certainly in our country and around the world. Uh, these mountains are certainly the place-making feature and that give us access that no other city that I've seen anywhere in the world has. Uh, we have a quality of life um, that leads to livability with great neighborhoods and, and, and certainly wonderful people. Um, while we take for granted and it, it can be divisive in our community, being the headquarters of a institution, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with 15 million members is an incredible benefit. And I can tell you from talking to mayors around the country, there is no city that has a better partner 
as a leading uh, citizen or business uh, than was true for me with the LDS Church. And we are also the heart of the state of Utah. Every major state institution is located in Salt Lake City, and that cannot be said for any other capital city in the country. So we've got so much uh, going for it, and for us, and, and, for, and for the city. Um, and what it's gonna take, I think, to continue on this uh, path uh, towards uh, our potential is both good leadership, um, good, good judgment, um, and proactive policies um, to achieve um, what is our potential. And I've got to say, other cities around the country are doing this. In some cases, I'd say today, uh, significantly better than Salt Lake City. They are meeting challenges, they are seeing opportunities, and they are acting on them. Um, and thank goodness, because somewhere in government we need that, right? Um, and, it's, uh, and I think that's happening more often um, at, the, at the local level. So I would say that um, you know, the things that certainly I've learned over the years um, are things that hopefully uh, serve this city well. Um, but I'd also, I also think about uh, something that uh, was said about uh, George Washington, which is that the only elected leader, he was the only elected leader, George Washington was, who didn't blame the previous administration for their current <laughs> problems. So remember that um, for the next mayor of Salt Lake City, because uh, it's an easy hole to go down, I can tell you. Um, but I'm also confident um, that my team and I, in our time in office, managed um, a lot of complexity, and we were able to improve this city and the services that we are hired to provide. And I was thankful then, and am certainly increasingly um, appreciative today of the opportunity uh, and the incredible support uh, that I had um, from my family, from friends, and from colleagues both inside and outside of the city. Um, I'll always be a great champion uh, of this city. Thank you. Oh, so Kate's going to come up and join me. And we're going to, um, I mean, hopefully this will work because we haven't practiced it. We're going to pull off this drape and then uh, people enjoy yourselves, socialize. Um, and I, I appreciate that the mayor's office has provided us with some, uh, some refreshments as part of this. You ready to go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>